second of your saw, so optic. No, if you want, I can show you again. Yes. What? This is the largest. Like here, there are many nerves, but there is also in here through optic canal. It passes optic nerve. Optic nerve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we can see very clearly. This is optic nerve. Yes. This continues and goes to uh, this eyeball. Then third, fourth. And uh, six, they are oculomotor throat clear and abducent. Actually, um, the abducent should be somewhere here. I never can see them clearly, but we will try in the next lesson. Uh, all of them pass through superior orbital fissure and supply uh, muscle, extrinsic muscles of an eyeball. Yes, I will tell you about a trigeminal nerve. This is here we can see trigeminal nerve. We said after it leaves through. Um, no, at the board, lateral border of pons, between lateral border of pons and middle cerebellar peduncles, uh, fibers of this nerve, they move anteriorly and laterally, and they reach trigeminal impression on the anterior surface of petrous part of temporal bone. And this trigeminal impression is for trigeminal or semilunar or gasserian ganglion. It is sensory ganglion, it is semilunar in shape, here we can see it, this ganglion, and here we also can see it. It is located in trigeminal impression, and it is formed by bodies of sensory neurons. Trigeminal nerve is mixed. It contains sensory and motor fibers, but it is divided into three branches. Only one of them, that is mandibular nerve, contains both sensory and motor fibers. These two, ophthalmic and maxillary, they are purely sensory. So motor fibers do not enter the ganglion. They pass under the ganglion, and after that, uh, at the region of oval foramen, foramen ovale, they join sensory fibers and form mandibular nerve. So this is ophthalmic nerve, nervus ophthalmicus. It enters orbit through superior orbital fissure, and very fast it's divided into its three terminal branches. This one is frontal nerve, nervus frontalis, the middle one. Then laterally it goes lacrimal nerve, nervus lacrimalis, it goes to the lacrimal gland. And medially there must be nasociliary nerve, Nervus nasa ciliaris. No, I think this one. Nervus nasa ciliaris. Yes. So frontal nerve goes above, yes, uh, along the superior wall of the orbit. This is, I think, what? Levita or maybe superior rectus, superior rectus, I think. Okay, so it goes uh, along the superior wall of the orbit, and at the end, it gets divided into two branches, supraorbital and supratrochlear nerve. Supraorbital goes through supraorbital foramen uh, in the supraorbital margin, yes, and supratrochlear goes through trochlear foramen, trochlear. So, and they live here. Uh, and they, they are sensory branches, they supply skin of the forehead, medially and laterally, so the whole skin of the forehead, the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerves. Lacrimal nerve carries branches to lacrimal gland, yes, glandular lacrimalis, but it also contains sensory fibers. But lacrimal gland also needs uh, autonomic, yes? Autonomic fibers come here from pterygopalatine ganglion, that is located in pterygopalatine fossa, with zygomatic nerve, uh, nervus zygomaticus that enters through inferior orbital fissure and gives communicating branch to lacrimal nerve. So that's how it receives parasympathetic fibers. Lacrimal gland. Uh, then nasociliary nerve, nervus nasociliaris, it goes along the medial wall of orbit and it gives anterior and posterior ismoid branches to enter through anterior and posterior ismoid foramina to ismoid AS cells and then posterior ismoid nerve gives anterior meningeal, no, meningeal branch to supply uh, dura mater of anterior cranial fossa. Anterior ismoid nerve gives um, nasal branches to supply mucosa of nasal cavity. Also, nasociliary nerve gives um, infratrochlear nerve to supply skin no, at the medial uh, angle of the eye. Yes, infratrochlear nerve. Okay, what else? Uh, it was about as this, of thalmic nerve. And then, uh, maxillary nerve. Maxillary nerve leaves cranial cavity through foramen rotundum. Here we can see it. And it enters pterygopalatine fossa. And here we can also see this is of thalmic, yes.
in this Toronto. Okay, and this is maxillary nerve. Maxillary nerve. So it enter, it uh, leaves cranial cavity through foramen rotundum, and maxillary nerve is purely sensory. But because here in pterygopalatine fossa, pterygopalatine ganglion located, it is parasympathetic. Many branches of maxillary nerve they also contain parasympathetic fibers. So you have to revise structure of pterygopalatine fossa because through each of the openings of pterygopalatine fossa, branches of maxillary nerve pass. So first of all, maxillary nerve gives infraorbital nerve, nervus infraorbitalis, that enters orbit through inferior orbital fissure, and then it enters infraorbital canal, canalis infraorbitalis, on the inferior wall uh, of the orbit. And while this nerve passes, no, like infraorbital artery, yes? Uh, while this nerve passes through infraorbital canal, it gives alveolar branches to uh, anterior upper teeth. And when it leaves through infraorbital foramen in the anterior surface of maxilla, it gets divided into three branches, so it forms small goose foot, passant serenus minor. It gives inferior palpebral branches, dorsal nasal branches, and superior labial branches to supply skin of inferior eyelid, of dorsum of nose, and superior lip, yes, upper lip. So this is intraorbital nerve. Also, sphenopalatine nerve, nervus sphenopalatinus, we do not see it, but it enters through sphenopalatine foramen, enters middle nasal passage, and here it is divided into superior, posterior, medial, and lateral nasal branches to supply again nasal mucosa. Greater palatine nerve, nervus palatinus major, goes through greater palatine canal, to uh, oral cavity, and then it supplies hard uh, and soft palate. Mm, that's it, greater palatine. What else can we say? No, these are, yes, these are the branches. A zygomatic nerve also enters through inferior orbital fissure, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, also enters through superior orbital fissure, gives communicating branch to the lacrimal nerve from ophthalmic nerve, and also it gets divided into zygomatic facial and zygomatic temporal nerve to supply skin of lateral region of the face, and it passes through corresponding foramina and supplies skin of this uh, lateral region of the face and skin of anterior, um, uh, anterior part of temporal region. That's it. So mandibular nerve, nervus mandibularis, mm -hmm. here it is, it is mixed branch of trigeminal nerve, here we also can see it, it leaves through uh, foramen ovale, and after that it gets divided into its numerous branches. So first of all it gives branch auricular temporal nerve, what's this one by the way, this is auricular temporal nerve, nervus auricular temporalis. How to find it very easily? We should find middle meningeal artery, yes, from where does middle meningeal artery start? From the maxillary yes. artery? Yes, first part, yes, pterygo, uh, mandibular Pterygo. section, yes, Pterygo. of the mandibular section of maxillary artery. And so this auricular temporal nerve, right after it starts from mandibular nerve, it gets divided into lateral and medial branches, lateral and medial auricular temporal nerve. And it surrounds middle meningeal artery. After that, after it surrounds, it again joins together and goes to skin, uh, above the parotid gland, so in front of the auricle it supplies, in anterior part of the auricle. It is auricular temporal nerve. It also contains, at the end, parasympathetic fibers, because here otic ganglion is located, parasympathetic that belongs to glossopharyngeal nerve, and it gives parasympathetic fibers to parotid gland also. So, after, uh, what else? Which other branches it gives? This is the largest branch of the mandibular nerve. It is inferior alveolar nerve, nervus alveolaris uh, inferior. It, together with inferior alveolar artery, enters mandibular canal, yes, and gives branches to um, lower teeth. And when it leaves uh, from mandibular canal in the mental foramen, it uh, continues as mental nerve to supply skin of the chin. Uh, before inferior alveolar nerve, leaves, enters mandibular canal, it gives branches to some of the suprahyoid muscles. It gives branch to mylohyoid muscle, uh, yes, mylohyoid mm -hmm. branch, and to anterior belly of digastric muscle. Also, mandibular nerve supplies all the masticatory muscles, so it gives temporal nerve to temporalis muscle. Masister, bacalis, yes. lateral pterygoid, yes. superficial temporal. No, it is, no, superficial temporal it is auricotemporal. Yes. 
Yes. No, to, tem to temporarily muscle. Yes. And uh, what else? It gives also lingual nerve, nervous linguali, this one. It goes, uh, it's sensory branch. It carries general sensation fibers from anterior two thirds of the tongue. But also here in the lingual nerve, uh, taste fibers are present. Uh, but after that, I don't think we will see it, but... Ma'am, in the BDC, it was mm -hmm. written like the if we are damaging the coda tympani, yes. then the uh, sensation from the anterior two third portion will be also gone. How does it possible? Uh, as you are saying, that the branch is supplied by the lingual now. Yes. No. Taste sensation will be gone. Yes. General sensation will not be gone. Okay. Only taste because coda tympani. Yes. First, these fibers move uh, through lingual nerve, but after that, they get separated. And here, I think coda tympani is not preserved, <coughs> and. Uh, and then the scorda tympani is a branch of fission nerve. But general sensation fibers, they continue, join this uh, main trunk of mandibular nerve, and mm. uh, this body of this, bodies of these neurons are located here in trigeminal ganglion. Yes. So this is lingual nerve. Does the lingual mm. nerve will be supplied the submandibular and the sublingual gland? Uh, yes. Why uh, we are needing the general sensation for these mm. glands? Capsules. Uh, have general sensation like if they are increased if they are enlarged this then we will feel pain okay yes yes but uh, also uh, from corda tympani parasympathetic fibers they pass small way in the lingual nerve but after that they get separated come up to sublingual and submandibular ganglia yes and from sublingual and submandibular ganglia they reach um, this corresponding salivary glands these are parasympathetic fibers. Okay. They um, anatomically do, do not belong to trigeminal nerve. They come from superior salivary nucleus of which nerve? Superior salivary mm. in the seventh number? Yes, facial nerve. Yes. I am asking that the yes. uh, you are saying the lingual now having the sensory fibers yes. for the submandibular and the sublingual. Yes. Are they passing through the ganglion of the submandibular and the sublingual? They pass, in, but they do not form sinus. Okay. So the only parasympathetic fibers which are supplying yes. the glands. Yes. And if it is parasympathetic ganglion, then okay. only parasympathetic fibers form synapses in this place. Yes. Mm -hmm. From where the parasympathetic fibers are coming to this uh, uh, ganglion? And I have told you from superior salivary nucleus. Okay. Mm. To what ganglion? It comes from inferior salivary nucleus. Yes. Mm. Mm. So that's what you will have to know. Uh, all the branches. No, not but. Which branches are visible? You have to see. You have to be able to show. This is, I think, auricular temporal nerve. Yes. This is inferior alveola. And you should revise how mandibular canal is formed. Yes, no, all of the structures. Masticatory muscles you have to revise. This is lingual, also clearly visible here. Lingual, this one, lingual. If uh, some things you do not see, then you should go to anatomy museum and to see there also. Because in museum we can see all the branches. With your permission. <coughs> Any questions? No. Yes. Okay. So you have no questions and you may be.